Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Behind the Closed Doors. I know it's been a while, but we are now starting the workshops again. We don't do a lot of workshops, of course due to the whole COVID thing, but we try to do a one each week and today it's the light of the classical masters. It's gonna be an awesome workshop because without any doubt this is one of my favorites. Because in this workshop I get to play with flags, reflections and of course that old look that I really like. So join us for today's episode of Behind the Closed Doors, the light of the classical masters. And you might notice a difference in our building because Anna Week is actually painting it. So look at the front and look at the side because he's already done the sides. Looks a lot wider again. And it's not done yet. He's doing a great job. Now, in case you didn't see the previous vlog, we are still, of course, following all the rules because we want to make sure that we have a safe environment. We take this stuff really, really serious. Of course, it's the health of ourselves, our parents, but also our students. And we want to make sure that everybody is safe. So what do we do in our studio? First of all, you see these things on the doors. And that's actually handy because now you can open up the door with your elbow so you don't have to do it with your hands. Over here, we have our station where you can actually clean your hands have some a nice paper and of course everywhere we have these signs keep 1.5 meter distance better six feet apart than six feet on the right guys so we take a lot of care to make sure that everything runs as smoothly as possible today and besides all that we also open up all the doors in our studio so we have a nice airflow going around and that way we hope to minimize any chance of infection Also in the studio we take a lot of distance. As you can see, chair one, two, three and four. We have four students today and they are pretty far away from each other. Okay, so today's workshop, the classical masters, what is it all about? Now, when you look at photography, we all have our heroes, of course, people that inspire our work and people which photos we just absolutely love. Now, in all honesty, for me, it all started with David LaChapelle. I just love his images, the styling, the colors. It's so screaming out like poppy, and I really like that. On the other end, I really like the old photographers like Helmut Newton, Richard Everdon, and even further back, of course, George Harrell with those amazing glamour shots. And that's what it's all about today, creating a mix of all those combined, but with a very, very heavy sentiment on that old fashioned photography. So a lot of black and white photography, a lot of harsh light qualities. And most of all, I'm going to explain the use of flags, which without any doubt, if you master the use of flags, it's one of the best things you can use in your photography because you can literally tailor make your light the way that you want it oh and by the way we are working on the final stages of our new instructional tutorial called the light of the classical masters in which i explain all the techniques and more which you're going to see in the vlog today because the vlogs are behind the scenes videos i give a lot of information in these but it's not a tutorial of course that one is coming very soon okay the students are almost here let's start the workshop with our model today rosa Okay, set number one. It started out as a very simple portrait, but of course we didn't want to keep it a simple portrait. So as soon as I got the light in order, it was a little bit too broad. So that's when you actually bring in those flags because those flags are absolutely awesome. 
if you place a flag really close to your light source, it will be very, very soft in its edge transfer. The more you move that flag towards your model, the harder that edge transfer will be. And you can play a lot with that. You can actually create literally like a Zorro mask or and then invert it, of course, because the light is on her face. But you can do so much with those flags. And I think it's... I don't see them a lot in modern studios and I really think that's a mistake because as soon as you start mastering the use of those flags, there's so much stuff you can do with lighting. So absolutely awesome, love the results, let's take a look at them. Now you might wonder, hey Frank, how do you get that really cool out of focus ideas? I'm actually using for this set, the Lens Baby Composer. It's a really cool system. It works a little bit like a tilt and shift lens, only it doesn't shift, it only tilts. And by literally tilting that lens, and you can do it any way you want, you create a very, very nice out of focus area. Don't overdo it, sometimes I do, but keep it a little bit nice and you can create something really cool that mimics a little bit that old style technical camera or a tilt and shift lens. I really like those lenses. Set number two, relatively simple setup. One light source aimed down. I really like that way of lighting because now when somebody's wearing a hat or for example, sunglasses, you really get that nice shadow under her head. And by just lifting up the chin a little bit, you can literally determine how much light you want in her eyes. In this case, I wanted it really, really dark. Now, of course, the colors also work great with our click prop backdrops and of course her brown shirt. It just gave me a really nice and warm look. And that's also what I tried to do in the retouching, make it a little bit warmer. So let's take a look at those results. Setup number three was not that difficult for lighting setup. The main reason we did this setup is because somebody asked like, hey, I really like that shallow depth of field that you did in the previous sets. Only in the previous sets, I actually used a lens baby. Can you also do that without the lens baby? Yes, you can. Now, in this case, I'm using a Minolta 85mm 1.4 lens. And I mounted that on my uh, Sony camera with a converter. So you can still use the old A-mount lenses or Minolta lenses on the modern Sonys with a converter, the LA-A3 or LA-A4. Now, one of the things that I always like to explain is if you want shallow depth of field, it's not about your aperture. It's a little bit about your aperture, but it's not always the aperture. Let's say you aim your camera straight at a wall. You can shoot on 1.0 and everything will be sharp. Now, when you start to angle your camera, this is actually when you start to see that shadow, or oh, sorry, you see the focus fall off. So one part is sharp and everything else is well blurry. And this is something that of course we really like to enhance that look of sharp eyes and everything else is a little bit blurry. You can do it in Photoshop or with a tilt and shift lens or something like a lens baby, but you can also do it with a wide aperture. So in this case, 1.4. The first shot I did actually was straight on our model and at that point you see that everything is sharp. 
the second shots, and those are also the shots you're going to see in a moment, I actually lifted myself up a little bit and shot under an angle. Now, the cool thing is, if you want to shoot with wide open apertures, never just aim your camera straight at your model. The only thing you will do with that is that your model will be fully sharp and the background will be out, fo out of focus. The cool part, however, is if you just angle your camera slightly, you can literally determine that this part, for example, is sharp and everything else just blurs nicely into that backdrop. And that also prevents that you get that look of a, a, a photoshopped image. You know what I mean, right? You see a model that's sharp and the backdrop is totally out of focus and it just looks fake. Now, if you also angle it a little bit towards your model, that's the part where it starts to get really interesting. And then you also get that focus nicely into your backdrop. So it doesn't look like glued on. It really looks like she's part of that area and has that nice out of focus look around her. So it blends a little bit nicer if you use that also on your model. The next setup, also part of a really cool trick. Now, of course, you want that nice, out of focus, blurry look, but you also want it sharp sometimes, right? But how do you still get that glow? Now, one of the lenses I love to use for this is actually the Lens Baby Velvet. Those lenses are razor sharp, but they still have that nice glow when you shoot them wide open. I can you also do it without a Lens Baby. Yes and no, it doesn't give you the same results, but actually when you use something like a pantyhose or something where you can literally look through and you hold that in front of your lens, you get a nice diffuse look. Now make absolutely sure that you don't aim a strobe straight at your lens in this case to create for example lens flare, because the material in front of your lens will start to flare up and at that point you only end up with a white photo. So in this case, it's very important that your backlight, in this case, we're using a strip light and a grid, as you saw in the video, is actually not aimed directly at your lens, but at your model. And now when you put the material in front of your lens, you get that nice glow in your images. So let's take a look at those images and try it out at home with pantyhose. You can use black, white, something with a little bit of glitters. You can use two layers or one layer or four. And if your outer focus doesn't work, no problem, pre-focus and then put the material in front and press or use manual focus, that's always good. So really cool trick, very, very cheap. The lens baby is still a lot better of course, but it's still very, very cool to do. Yes, it was a busy day, set number five on the stage, just to show you how you can create something more interesting with a wide angle. So if you see this shot solo, it's not that interesting, but it's the whole story behind. And of course, I can't do that in the vlog, but this was a whole explanation about angles, choosing your right position, also choosing where to place your light, and of course, a little bit of set dressing. We're gonna do that way more in the future, but in this case, it was just the sofa and we try to make it a little bit more interesting with a little bit of material on the sofa and of course the mirror if you spotted the mirror so let's take a look at those images
for the final set we are using a room divider and it's not really to photograph the room uh, divider but it's actually to create structure on the wall behind our model now i did include it in the pictures as you can see in a moment and i'm even sh shooting one from the back straight into the room divider but officially the whole idea of this setup was to explain that you can use whatever you want to create structure on your backdrop because let's be honest a flat backdrop it's pretty boring so by using something like a plant or a ladder or a chair or in this case a room divider you can create that structure on the backdrop now how does it work remember the flags right if you place a flag close to your light source it will create a soft edge transfer if you place it closer to your model the edge transfer will be more harsh so in this case i'm actually using one strobe all the way to the back and the room divider is pretty close to our model and that means that the detail on the backdrop and on our model of course will be pretty sharp now if it's too sharp the only thing i have to do is move the stroke closer towards the room divider or the room divider further away from the model of course get the same result and this is such a powerful trick if you master this you can literally create many many interesting figures and structures on your backdrops and you can use anything uh, be creative use for example um your keys i don't know just just try something and you will find out that if you use that light on it it creates something beautiful on the backdrop and that was actually the final set for today <laughs>